Hi everybody, it's Julie. Today I'm going to be testing out an SVG file I've been working on. This one is a single path ditzy floral background, which I think is so sweet. And you can foil or draw or deboss with it using any of those digital cutters like the Cricut, the uh, Silhouette machines, Brother Scan and Cut. So any of those machines that can read an SVG file and have drawing or writing capabilities, they can use this file. I also thought it would be fun to take you along with me because I'm going to be using the Cricut Foil Transfer System and comparing it to the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill. I do have a personal preference. Um, some people have great success with the Cricut Foil Transfer. I have not and I switched to the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill and had much better success. And if you've been on the fence trying to decide for yourself, well, maybe this comparison will help you out too. All right, let's get started. What I'm gonna do after I launch a design space is I need to get to the upload window. So I'm gonna click on Canvas and then over down here in the left, there's the upload button. And then click on upload image and I'm going to click on browse instead of dragging the file because it's buried <laughs> somewhere in my computer, but I know what it's called so I can search for it and find it. So it's a single path ditzy. There it is. Okay. So now I can click on it, click on open, and then I'll click on continue. Now, I don't want to mess with adding it to a collection right now because I really want to mess with it <laughs> and make some changes before I save it. And that way I won't have to do all that work the next time around. <laughs> so I'm going to hit upload right now first. And there it is. And now when it appears on the canvas, it's going to look really funky because it thinks I want to cut all of this stuff out. But really what I want to do is I want to foil it. And I'm going to be working with the Cricut foil transfer system first. So I'm just going to go up while I still have it highlighted here. I'm going to go and change that operation to foil and then medium because that's the tip I'm going to be using. I'm going to take this uh, pattern and uh, rotate it a little bit and then I'm going to duplicate it. And the reason why I'm going to duplicate it a couple times is that I already know that every time I've tried to foil with this system on the first run, it doesn't do a very good job. It doesn't matter whether I increase pressure settings, whether I change the paper type, it just doesn't matter. So I am going to duplicate it three times or two times so that I have three versions of it, three copies of it. So now I'm going to select all of these and I want it to go over and do three passes. So the easiest way to do that is to just make you know, three versions of it. And then I'm going to go over here to the align menu and hit center. And that will align them perfectly on top of each other, vertically and horizontally. And then while they're still highlighted together, I'm going to go down here and click attach. Now it's going to function. It's going to look like just one layer, but it's actually three copies of that layer. The next thing I need to do is to create a ghost a uh, quarter sheet of cardstock because that's what I'm going to be working on. And that will make sense when we get to the actual physical mat. But I'm going to grab a free shape here, grab a square, and I am going to hit the aspect ratio, you know, sizing up here. I'm going to click the lock there and I'm going to change this to five and a half inches by four and a quarter because that's a standard quarter sheet of cardstock and the front of an A2 card. So now um, I need this. This is showing up on front and I need to move it to the back. So I'm going to click on arrange and send to back. So now it's behind this um, layer of foil. And then I am going to resize this a bit and it's going to give me a nice matte border all the way around. And to make sure that those are equal, I'm just going to grab that and go up to uh, align, got them both selected, and I'm going to hit center. So now it's perfectly centered vertically and horizontally with that rectangle shape. Now the next thing I need to do is because I've already got a piece of cardstock that I've cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, is I'm going to trick the Cricut into thinking I want to score this shape. And this will make more sense as I go. So I'm going to grab a hold of that 
and I'm going to change the operation from cut to score. And then you're going to see it change. And you're going to see this layer now becomes a score and it's converted to a dashed line here. And then I'm going to select both of these and hit attach. So basically now what the machine thinks I want to do is that I want to foil this pattern three times inside of this scored square or rectangle. Okay, now before I hit make it, or when I hit make it, it's going to ask me if I want to save this. And I do. This way I don't have to mess around with this the next time I want to foil with the Cricut Foil Transfer System and this particular design. I'm going to save it to my stuff. And you can see right up here, the screen is a little bit grayed out, but that's where my stuff is located. And I'm going to click save and I'm going to give it a name. So um, Ditsy Floral Background. I abbreviate things a lot. And because I know that this is being set up for the Cricut Foil system, I'm just going to put Cricut Foil. That way I know when I go into my collections, I'm going to add it to miscellaneous, I know that this is all set up and ready to go for the Cricut Foil system. So now I'm going to hit Save. And the next time I want to make this, I can just go into my stuff and grab it and head right on over to the Make It screen. So now that we've you know, saved it and we've hit Make It, it's telling me I need to prepare one mat. And it's thrown this automatically on the upper left corner because that's what the Design Space software always does. That's not where I want it. I'm actually going to move it down here and I'm going to position it so that that upper left corner is right there along the 7 inch and the 3 inch. And when I go to set up my mats physically, I'm going to line my real quarter sheet of cardstock in the exact same position. Now, uh, when I hit continue, and I am going to use medium cardstock. You can browse all materials depending on what kind of material you're using, but I'm finding that medium cardstock works really well. And then I need to edit this tool. I'm not going to be using the scoring wheel. I am going to click on edit tools and I'm going to click stylus and apply. So the next thing I want you to be aware of is we're not really going to load the scoring stylus into clamp A. We're going to leave it empty. And the reason for that is that the Cricut machine cannot sense whether or not there is anything loaded into clamp A. So we're just going to fool it. We're going to trick it. And then we're going to get our foil transfer tool loaded into um, the clamp B. And I'm working with the medium tip, which has the double lines on it. And I'm going to go ahead and get my stuff set up and then we'll be ready to go. Now the Cricut foiling transfer system works exclusively on the Cricut machines and it's a cold system. So it just uses pressure. It doesn't use um, any other method but pressure with these tips. And the rings around each one indicate a fine tip, a medium tip, or a broad tip. So one is fine and three is broad and the two rings means medium. And that's the one that I work with most of all. And it's going to go down into this housing. Um, there's a little plunging lever at the other end. So if you need to eject it from the magnets that are holding it in place, you can do that and swap your tips out depending on what you're doing. But that's how it holds that tip in there. Now when we get to putting our cardstock on the cutting mat, I am working with 80 pound cardstock. It is textured on one side and smooth on the other. And no matter what foiling system you're using, you're always going to get better results if you use the smooth side of the paper. But I did want to mention that the pre-cut sheets are four by six. So they are longer than a standard uh, A2 card, but they're not as wide as a standard A2 card. So you kind of have to play around a little bit with how you're going to tape it onto the surface of your mat. So first thing I'm going to do is line up the left hand upper corner of my cardstock panel here with the seven and three inch uh, grid marks. And then I'm going to go ahead and mask it all off. And you can use typing paper, you can use cardstock, which is what I did. I had these laying around, so I just used them. And I use a brayer to make sure everything is secured to the sticky mat. But the reason why I mask it off is 
I don't know how many times when I didn't mask things off, I dropped this foil sheet onto the sticky surface of the mat. And so then that will kind of ruin the surface of your mat because it's transferred the foil. It's self-adhesive, right? And um, then I've ruined the foil itself. I'm going to have to just find another whole piece that I can use to cover this. So just a word to the wise, um, just using some of this masking tip that I'm doing here will really help save your foil. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So now I'm using an acrylic block set on top of the foil sheet just to keep it in place while I secure it with tape. And I'm making sure that when I put the tape down, I am avoiding wherever that foil tool or the tip is going to cross over onto the foil and transfer because it can't go through both the tape and the foil itself to do the transfer. So if you want to get a complete transfer, you got to watch out, make sure that you're not impeding the path of the foil tool. So now I've got a nice, um, taut, um, secure piece of foil, and I'm going to go ahead and swap out the cutting blade for the foil transfer tool, and I'm going to leave the scoring stylus or the clamp A out. I'm not, I'm not going to put anything in it. And then when I hit the load button, it's going to go um, into its first uh, phase and then load the mat. And then I hit the go button and it's going to do the phantom score because there is no scoring tool um, loaded in clamp A. So that's all I want it to do. I don't want it to really do anything. And then when I hit the go button a second time, I already have the foil tool loaded in clamp B and it's going to go ahead and work its magic. So I increased the speed on this by 600% because literally it took almost half an hour for it to complete the three passes. And that seems like forever that you're waiting <laughs> for it to finish. But I also know from experience that a single pass would give me dismal results. So I'm telling you, if you want to try this out, try setting it up to do at least two, more than likely three passes to get the best results that you ever will from this particular um, foiling system. So I'm just peeling it back a little bit because I want to double check and see if I want to send it through again. But that would be another half hour because it's going to run three passes. So I'm pretty much um, feeling like, you know what, if it didn't get it all in three passes, then this is as good as it's going to get. And I can go ahead and remove that piece of foil and eject it from the machine. Now the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill actually uses heat and pressure to transfer foil and it does uh, come available in these pre-cut 4x6 sheets. Uh, there's also variety packs with gorgeous colors. You can get it in 12x12 12 12 sheets just like the Cricut foil but one thing they do that Cricut does not is they produce 12x96 inch rolls of foil that you can cut to size. Now the tool itself comes with a fine tip, a broad tip, a medium tip, which was in the middle, but I'm using that one. It comes with adapters for using it on all the different brands of uh, digital cutting machines. And each of these nibs has its own USB uh, port or what do you call it? You know, the thingy that you put into a battery pack if you want to power it that way or plug it into the port. Um, your Cricut Maker actually comes with a USB port. So that's how I'm going to be powering mine. But in the meantime, this is what it looks like. And I've already screwed on the adapter, which has the letter C on it for my Cricut machine. And that's all it takes to just find the right adapter for your machine according to the instructions and get that screwed on there. And then uh, the next thing I need to do is get my file prepped. So I'm going to move back over to the computer onto design space for that launched a new project and I'm going to go over into um, my stuff and I'm going to find the file that we created previously for the Cricut foil system. Now if I click on it like that it's going to ask me if I just am I ready to make it then I can throw it onto my canvas and get going but I need to customize it because we're working with a different foiling system. So I still want to use the same project but I'm going to customize it now for the We Are Memory Keepers system. So we're still going to create a, we're going to leave the score line alone. It's going to be a, a phantom uh, score line that we're working with, but I need to change all of this foiling stuff. So I actually don't need this one. So I'm going to hit the trash can and delete it and this one and delete it. And this time I'm going to go over to the operation menu and I'm going to choose pen. 
and then it's going to show up in black. I like to match the color, so I'm just going to take the color picker. If you know what you're doing, you don't have to, but I just like to match everything visually by color so that I know what I'm doing as I go. <laughs> so now what the machine thinks I'm going to do is it thinks I'm going to score a quarter panel or quarter sheet panel here, and then I'm going to draw something with a pen. And coincidentally, you could use a metallic pen um, and draw this if you wanted to. But we're gonna psych the machine, trick it, fool it into foiling with the We Are Memory Keepers. So now I'm going to hit make it. And here we are, we're back at the uh, same screen and then I'm gonna drop this down into the same position and I'm gonna set up my physical mat in exactly the same way. And then I can go ahead and hit continue and then again, I am working on medium cardstock, so nothing's changed there. So I'm gonna hit medium cardstock. Then it's gonna ask me to load these tools. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit the tools and I'm gonna to switch to the scoring stylus and click apply. So now what it's done is it's told me, okay, we need to do this operation first and then we'll do the pen operation next. So I'm not going to load a scoring stylus into the clamp A. I'm just going to leave it empty and I'm going to go ahead and load my project and let it run the scoring operation and then when it pauses that's when I will load the foil tool because if I load it now it's gonna actually run it like a score line all the way around and that's not what I wanna do. I just want a phantom score line there. So now we're ready to go over to the machine. Now I wanted to show you that I've set up um, my mat the same way as I did with the previous version, only this time um, I'm working with the foil quill foil sheets and I used their tape. And same cardstock, 80 pounds, smooth side up and uh, the pretty side of the foil up and avoided where the foil quill is gonna roll over the foil with, when I put the tape on. So on the machine now, um, this is gonna get loaded into clamp A. So I need to remove the pen holder in the clamp A, and that takes two hands. You're gonna probably push from down below with one hand and your other hand is gonna grasp it and pull upwards. So once you get that popped out of there, it does take a little bit of finessing to get it out. You're gonna close it, but make sure you leave it empty. We're not gonna put a scoring stylus in there. And we hit the load button. And we also wanna make sure before we do hit the, the go button that we've pushed those white star wheels all the way over um, to the far ends of the roller bar because I had forgotten to do that on the Cricut version. And luckily it didn't transfer the foil with those little white tracks um, in the foil, but uh, you just wanna make sure that you, you've got those star wheels pushed off to the side. So now here is my uh, quill tool and you see it's got the adapter ready to go on it. It requires power. You can use a battery pack that has a USB port, you know, like you charge your phone, you can charge it up that way um, or power it that way. Or you can just use the USB port on, um, if your machine has one, the Cricut Maker has a USB port on the right hand side. So I'm just gonna plug it in there and let the maker power it. Now I gotta plop that into clamp A Make sure I close that. And then um, I'm gonna put the heat shield in there because I need to allow this five minutes to preheat. Another important thing to do is to get a hold of that cord and set it up um, so it's not going to fall down like you saw there onto the mat because it'll get caught up in the roller bars as the paper is moving in and out or feeding in and out there of the cavity. So I don't want it to drop down into the cavity, but I also want to make sure that it has enough slack to move back and forth along the roller bar. And I just keep a clamp handy. It's attached to my cart. And when I need it, I just grab that and clamp that cord like that. So um, it will safely um, move across the roller bar, but not drop down onto the mat. And then after five minutes of preheating, I can hit the go button. But I want to make sure that I remove, remove the heat shield. Ask me how I know. <laughs> oh, oh. It kind of got sucked up in there one time and I was lucky it didn't damage my machine. So if you'd rather not use it at all, feel free. Um, I noticed that it doesn't seem to, you know, having it or not having it doesn't seem to make a difference. Um, but 
in protecting the surface there, but you know, that's up to you. So now I've double checked to make sure that it foiled correctly. I don't need to send it through for another pass. It did it in one swoop. So now I can go ahead and eject that. And I'm going to unplug this USB cable because I don't want it sitting there um, staying hot or continuing to heat while I go over and inspect the end results here. And you can see the cricket on the left is kind of shimmery. Uh, sparkly and the foil quill on the right is reflective and a uh, kind of a thicker bolder um, finish even though we I used a medium tip on each one and I will have still shots left on my blog that you can go check out to see where it didn't really transfer all the foil completely on the Cricut version and then you can see what kind of results the uh, foil quill got project is complete and we're ready to um, move on. I want to save this, only this time I'm going to save it as something else. I'm going to save it as the Ditsy Floral Background, but this time I'm going to change it. I'm going to change the title to We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill. Okay, and you can capitalize that. I don't really worry about it. And I'm going to change that right there and I'm going to hit save. Okay, so it saved it to my stuff. Now I'm just going to go ahead and um, clear all this stuff out and the next time I want to do this, if I go to my stuff and then I'll find the file set up there and it's identified there. So I know the difference between these two because I've titled them differently and I'll know which one I want to throw onto my uh, mat and get going. As I said before, um, check out the still shots. It may help you determine which system is right for you. Thanks for watching.